I'm Judy Strayer. And I'm Judy Strayer, and as chair of the Local Historic District Commission, I'm calling this meeting to order at 3:06 p.m. on Thursday, April 7th, 2022. Um, Based on Governor Baker's executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, general law C30A subsection 20 and signed Thursday, March 12th, 2020, this hearing and meeting is being held virtually using the Zoom platform. Minute, meeting is being recorded and minutes are being taken as usual. Um, I'll make, now call roll. Uh, Bruce Coldham. Yes, I'm here, can be heard, I hope. Yes. Yep. Jim Lumley? Yes, I'm here. Uh -huh. Thank you. Peggy Schwartz? Here. Thank you. Greta Wilcox? Here. Thank you. And Karen Winter? Here. And I'm Judy Strayer, and I am here. Um, in accordance with the provisions of the Mass General Law, Chapter 40C, and Section 3.49, Local Historic Districts of the Amherst General Bylaw, this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to the parties at interest. The Lo Amherst Local Historic District Commission is holding this public hearing to provide an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding the follow following certificate of appropriateness application. And that is the one for 175 uh, Sunset Ave in Amherst. Great, thanks, Judy. Um, so I'm going to invite um, the applicants into the room here, the virtual room that is. So you have, let's see. So Bob should be joining us. I'll ask him and to unmute. I, did I misspeak? Did I say 175 sunset? I meant to say 75 sunset. Oh, right. Yep. 75 sunset. That's correct. Thank you. You just had me looking at my paperwork. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, Bob, just to clarify, is uh, who else from this Jackson project? Cass, is... The homeowner might be um, okay. to come in. I know he sent us an email saying to be there, so I don't. Okay, yep, yeah. Jackson. There he is. Here. Hi. Hey, hi. Hello. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jackson. Thank you. Thank you all, and thanks, Bob. Great. Great. So, so, yeah, go ahead, Judy. <laughs> I was going to say, if we're ready to start, um, we'll, the procedure will be that we'll hear testimony from the applicant, and then we'll, uh, if Ben has anything to add, he will. Uh, questions from us as the commission, um, and then any public comments. Okay. Um, so, I mean, I did a little bit of research on the house, um, you know, built in 1969, uh, definitely a colonial with a mid-century modern twist to it, um, both interior and exterior. Um, and the homeowners are really trying to, to bring out the you know, the, the lines and the elegance of the mid-century modern look. At the same time, they're looking to, you know, create a space where they can not only sit out front, but have safe access to their house because their current stoop is quite treacherous in the wintertime. We actually did some temporary things to it in the fall to make it a little bit more user-friendly. Um, <clears throat> uh, my personal opinion... Um, doing this for many years, I think that Maria Chow, the architect on this project, did a phenomenal job, you know, drawing up the plans and really capturing what it's going to look like from the road. Um, I've done quite a bit of work over on Amity Street near Lincoln and Sunset over the years, and, you know, I find Lincoln and Sunset to be a very eclectic neighborhood as far as house structures, and I think trying to enhance this one is going to go a long way to contribute um, you know, to the aesthetics of the neighborhood, honestly. So, I don't know how much more I could say than that. I don't know, uh, you know, like I said, they want to be able to sit out there and get to know their neighbors a little bit better and, you know, more importantly, have safe access to their home. I'm not seeing the pictures. Is, is, yep, I... I will, uh, I'll share that oh, now. I... 
so the uh bob do you want to describe at all about the kind of just the design and what we're seeing here yep. in terms of so materials I Yep, right now they just have a single entrance door. Um, they wanted to enhance that a little bit, let a little more natural light into the hallway. So they want to go to a double door unit. Um, and, you know, really wasn't uh, feasible to have a roof um, that had a peak on it to go off in both directions, not only for, you know, rain and snow, um, but uh, also where the windows are located upstairs, it, it would have really kind of been off balance um so the architect came up with this really nice you know mid-century modern slope one direction to shed the water um they've been working with a, a landscape architect to uh you know to enhance you know with plantings and some uh, hardscape around it um and just really you can tell they they want to bring the accent you know to that front entrance way right now the the house is a dark blue um, it's going to, you know, get painted at some point, um, a little bit darker, but they want to, you know, keep that natural cedar look around the front door and the window to, to really kind of accentuate that, that whole location and the aesthetic features that it's going to bring to the home. I don't know if I can say much more than that. I mean, yeah. I'm happy to answer any questions. Yeah, I was just going to also show the, uh, I think this is a, a framing plan, kind of just to show the, um, this is kind of a, a plan view, um, yep. looking at the new, uh, I guess this would, this doesn't show the roof necessarily, but just kind of the, the decking material and the, and the walkway. Correct. Um, the roof is going to be a standing scene black. Yeah. The roof, um, once again, you know, want to keep it simple. Yep. Um, at the same stage as, you know, you know, creating a safe and inviting um, atmosphere with the porch itself. Great. And then the, am I correct that the garage, a new garage door is being proposed that would match the front door? Correct. It would very much match the front door um, as well as the natural uh, cedar around the front door. It would be a cedar tone um garage door yep okay hmm. yes um great unless there's anything else to add from um bob or jackson i think we can move into commissioner questions It's pretty, from my point of view, it's pretty straightforward. Bob did a nice job of, uh, uh, you know, outlining the the issues. I mean, right now the, we don't even have, it's, it's functioning as a quote unquote front door, but it's really like a side door and it's a bit perilous as Bob suggested. So we were, the idea of putting a porch there was to create a real front porch rather than a, a, like a side door that we go in and, and um, it's just a big, uh, cement right now it's just a cement block much of which has already uh, fell, fallen into the ground so it's a it's a hazard that's why Bob did some and his people did some work to fortify it um, so it wasn't so dangerous but so this was both for uh, practical and aesthetic reasons that we wanted to put in a real front porch that would actually be able to uh, look out over the you know over the beautiful uh, you know Sunset Avenue sunset and um, and have a, a, a welcoming, uh, you know, uh, curb appeal and curb view. Right now, we don't really, we just kind of sneak in to this kind of, even though it's the front of the house, it's like sneaking in the side door and navigating the stairs as they sink. <laughs> so we, we, for all these reasons, we thought it would, it would, it would make the, the house look nicer, more appealing and be more um, connected to the neighborhood if we did, if we did a, a, front por a real front porch. Hmm. Um, Bruce? Um, I think it's quite an interesting uh, solution. Uh, I was, uh, Bobby, you're the builder, are you? Is that uh, your role in this? Yes, I am. Good. Um, I, I looked at the, uh, the elevation that, uh, Ben, you drew up first, and the porch uh, elevation looked very diagrammatic and my question was going to be really is it going to look just like that 
and uh, not from an aesthetic point of view, I think it fits rather nicely. I, it just seemed, uh, well, uh, that's a diagram, but are you going to be able to build it that way? And then when you showed the uh, details, I see exactly uh, that you are going to build it that way. Yep. And that it's going to have matching uh, um, um, ceiling boarding, uh, uh, ceiling boards uh, that match the, uh, the siding. So, um, and the and the stone and and the uh, work and the landscaping, uh, it it all appears rather elegant. I mean, there's probably a couple of things that if if I were doing it, I might change. But uh, I'm not here to uh, um, venture suggestions on how one would redesign projects. Only to make judgment or whatever uh, determinations and recommendations on uh, on appropriateness. And uh, it's. Uh, I I, th I think it's um, I think it's quite a nice solution, and I don't really have any questions. Uh, uh, I just make that comment. I, I was looking carefully to see if I did have questions, but at this point I don't. But um, others may have, and they may stimulate some 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 something further from me. Um, Greta, I also think it looks really really nice. I think. Um... I agree that the house didn't seem to have a front. You couldn't tell where the front door was as easily. And I liked that having a porch and I like the, um, how it fits into the mid-century modern design too. I like the cedar. So I just had one question, which is the term hard scrape. What does that mean? Well, just the, for the um, yard. Well, just like there's a planter in front on the right hand side. So that's done with more of a hardscape stone. You know, hardscape is okay. a, it's a kind of stone. Like retaining walls and and uh, you know paver patios and things like that. So it's it's, yeah. it's landscape that doesn't grow, uh, Greta. Oh, okay. I think it looks really nice, and it's an improvement. <laughs> so. Well, I don't know how many of you are from the neighborhood, but in the last couple of years, my team's done um, you know a project at two forty four Amity Street and two seventy two Amity Street, which you know kind of uh, made me take pause that Lincoln and Sunset had a historical district, but Amity Street doesn't. Um, both of those are, are older homes. One's early 1900s and the other one is mid 18th century. Um, and, you know, a lot of people are familiar with that little red cape, which I think is 270, 272 Amity. Um, and, uh, you know, we painstakingly take steps to really kind of have things blend into the existing home. You know, we don't want something to stand out like a sore thumb. And I personally, you know, chair a committee for a historical home in, in South Hadley. So I wouldn't certainly want somebody to come and put a salt box style addition on that either. So, um, but this really, you know, like I said, I think Maria and Jackson and Shelley uh, painstakingly worked to really try to draw out that mid-century modern appeal to this house. Because to me, it even without this looks more like a mid-century modern than it does a colonial. Um, so I think they really did a, an awesome job um, coming up with this style and design. Great, thank you. Um, Corinne, did you have something you wanted to say? I'm gonna echo what Greta said. I think it's really attractive. I live next door, so it'll be wonderful to have this uh, lovely uh, change to your front door. And I congratulate you. And yes, I agree that red cape, it amazes me to see how beautifully um, every addition has, has uh, improved that and blended in. So congratulations. Yes, I'm very much Thank in you. favor of what you're doing. Thank you. Great. Um, does anybody else have comments? No, I can go along with what I'm hearing, so I don't need to reiterate it's, it's a positive response to it. My, myself as well. I, I think it's an elegant solution. So. Great. Um, do we, are we ready to deliberate or is there something else? Probably a public comment. I don't know if there's anybody oh, in attendance who would be interested, but uh, there might yeah. be. So if there's anyone who wishes to make a public comment, um, you can raise your hand now and we will uh, invite you in. So I see one person, uh, John Sheldon. 
Uh, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, can hear, can you. hear you. Well, great. Yeah, I, I, I live across the street, so I, uh, um, I didn't have the benefit of seeing the pictures or anything, but I, I support it. If you all support it, sounds like it'll be nice and a great addition to the neighborhood. So I give my support. Great. Thank you. Thanks, John. If we're, uh, uh, I could uh, do what I customarily do, perhaps at this stage. Uh, Please. Um, and <laughs> and uh, uh, Judy, if you're okay, I'll I'll, I'll uh, uh, move to uh, grant a certificate of appropriateness appropriateness for the project at 75 Sunset. Uh, we're finding that the proposed work meets the review criteria of sections 8.1 and 8.2 of our local historic district bylaw, and it's compatible with the overall uh, appearance of the neighborhood. Um, and uh, uh, without any conditions, that's it. Oh, I guess it's and based on the uh, submitted documentation. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. So I guess I just wanted to. Um, I guess I, uh, once you're done making your motion, I just had one comment. Well, I, I'm I'm done, and if it's second, yeah. and then I guess we can discuss it. It's not the end of the road, but yeah. I just thought I'd put the motion on the table to move us forward. Mm -hmm. I second. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make one comment for Jackson and Bob, being that um, the uh, the local historic district, you know, uh, needs to approve of essentially, you know, more or less exactly what ends up being built. So sometimes this happened where folks come to the local historic district and then they, you know, develop the design a bit further and then apply for the building permit. And maybe there's some, um, something that the building, you know, inspectors recommend that might end up changing the design. So um, even if it's a slight tweak, um, so I guess I just wanted to, Double check, I guess that um, you you anticipate this design, you know, not not changing very much. Um, so this is this is already um, in the hands of the building department, and they're just okay. waiting. On That's it. right. So there's no there's no desire to change or tweak anything. It's been a long time to come to this point. So yeah, great. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're not backing up. <laughs> okay, good to hear. Okay. Um, so the motion's been made and seconded, so. So we approve the um, certificate? Well, yep. you just need voted. to um, call, call it to a vote. So I guess, Judy, that's that would be your role is okay. you, you make someone makes a motion, it's seconded, and then there there can be some okay. discussion after that. But at a certain point, you can call it call it to a vote. OK. Um, can I call, I'll call it to a vote? Yep. Uh, a point of order. Um, I'm uh, sorry. For, for, um, I'm perhaps to Ben this one, Judy. Uh, is this uh, where we can just do a show of hands on the screen or does it have to be a, a, a formal voice vote where each of us uh, uh, in turn acknowledge uh, uh, our, our vote? Um, for this, it would be a formal voice vote. Okay, so we need to go to each person, just as you did when you were introducing us, I think, Judy. Correct, yeah. If we're, when, we're, when we're ready. Are we ready? I think so. Okay. I yeah. mean, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, um, so I'm making, we're going to vote on um, Bruce Coldham. On the motion presented, yes. I'm sorry, on the motion presented. For 75 cents at hour. Oh, I see. Uh, yes. Um, Jim Lumley. I approve. Peggy Schwartz. Approve. Frida Wilcox. Yes, I approve. Karen Winter. Yes, I approve. Um, Judy Strayer, and I approve as well. Thank you very much. We thank you for your time. Thank you. Maybe someday you. we won't have to do this all via Zoom. <laughs> Uh -huh. Yeah, and thank you. I I appreciate the deliberations, and thank you all for your you know for your uh, thoughtful uh, uh, engagement, and uh, and I appreciate the.
the decision as well. So thank you for, for everything. We'll, we'll yeah. hopefully we'll see you walking by our house at some point <laughs> when we have a, a way to sit out there. <laughs> thank you. So I'm going to close. We need to close this part of the meeting. Yep, yeah, I'm leaving. Yep. Yeah, thanks, Bob, and thanks, Jackson. So thank you. Um, you guys thanks, can feel free to, <laughs> you can stay and watch the next hearing or you can feel free to leave, but thanks for coming. Thanks, thanks, we're both going back to work. <laughs> so thank you very much. Exactly. Thank you. Ben, uh, if I may, just to help uh, Judy uh, move into the, uh, uh, the swing the of things here. <laughs> yes. Uh, I, it occurred to me maybe what we should have done uh, at some point it was to have closed the public hearing after oh, right. the yeah. uh, yes and uh and it this was fairly seamless and 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 uh and so forth so i think we all just steamed through it uh shall uh, shall we deem that a, that a, a, a unanimous vote of of uh, to approve appropriateness is tantamount to closing the meeting or should we formally do that yeah so I, I, yeah I sorry I, I i had talked to judy about that and i think um um, but previously, I think the commission had been in the habit of, of closing the public hearing and then beginning deliberations and then voting on the certificate. However, I think that uh, led to an issue with the, uh, the townhouse project on Fearing Sunset where, where the public hearing was formally closed and then we ended up asking the applicant to come back. Um, so we had to re-advertise the public hearing. So I, I had told Judy that um, I think we should be in the habit of yeah closing the public hearing when when a vote is being being made on the certificate of appropriateness. So well, that was yeah. that was that yeah. was my fault because my no, motion I, should have been to move to close the public hearing, and instead I moved to certificate yeah, of appropriateness. No, that's okay. So I, I, I'm I'm a villain here, but uh, no, I, okay. I, I I repent and I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's okay. So I I I, I moved to close the public hearing. Second. Probably a show of hands. <laughs> yeah, I think show of hands is fine for that. <laughs> okay. So now we and now we reopen it for two fourteen yep. Main Street. Yep. Well, it's a, a new public hearing being called to order. So. Do I call it to order with roll call and everything? Not with roll call, but just. Um, okay. That in accordance with. Yep. Okay. So in accordance with the provisions of Mass General Law, Chapter 40C, Section 3.49, Local Historic Districts of the Amherst General Bylaw, this public hearing has been duly advertised and notice thereof has been posted and mailed to parties of interest. The Amherst Local Historic District Commission is holding this public hearing to provide an opportunity for interested citizens to be heard regarding the following certificate of appropriateness application at 214 Main Street in Amherst. Great, thanks, Judy, and uh, welcome, Shanti, and I'll in, uh, invite Jane Wald in. <coughs> Hi, Jane. Welcome. Okay. Um, hi, good afternoon. Thanks for um, convening today. Um, uh, as some of you may remember me from about a year ago. My name is Shantia Anderhagen, and I'm a historic preservation consultant working with the Emily Dickinson Museum on um, various projects. I was uh, before you about a year ago for the work at the homestead, uh, which is um, nearly wrapping up. We have a couple more months, but um, very exciting results to, to reveal uh, this spring and summer. So um, we're now before you today for uh, the next project that the museum will be undertaking. Uh, and this is at the Evergreens. I will share my screen. Okay. All right. Can you all see my screen? Yes, thank you. Great. Uh, so I have a fairly short PowerPoint to just go through with you to describe uh, 
what is happening with the energy conservation and systems project uh, at the Evergreens. Um, just bear with me while I hide all of you so I can read my notes. Um, so uh, I'm sure that you're all familiar with the Evergreens. Um, it is a two-story balloon frame Italianate house at 214 Main Street that was con uh, constructed in 1856 for Austin Dickinson, brother of the poet Emily Dickinson and his wife, uh, Susan. Uh, it is a significant um, prop historic property that has received some significant support from the National Endowment for the Humanities, NEH, uh, to undertake some important environmental uh, stabilization work. Just as a reminder, uh, it's listed on the National Register of Historic uh, Places and Historic District uh, as a contributing property, also on the State Register of Historic Places. Um, there is a um, preservation restriction that protects exterior and interior features that is held by the Massachusetts Historical Commission and it is in your local historic district as a contributing property. Uh, and I guess I just went through that. So the project at hand, um, this project is one of the five principal goals of the museum's five-year strategic plan. Um, the chief strategy in achieving this goal is to quote, improve care of the buildings and collections consistent with museum standards to exercise appropriate stewardship of the museum's unique cultural resources. This project will enhance the environmental conditions within this building, which houses uh, the largest collection of objects related to Emily Dickinson. Um, collections that have actually been stored in this uh, building with little environmental control for decades. Uh, museum staff and consultants that included architects, engineers, and conservators, have been assessing the Evergreens building envelope and systems in light of the risks to and the needs of this collection. Uh, they have refined the strategies for both non-mechanical improvements, focusing on thermal vapor and UV barriers, as well as installing a properly sized and distributed HVAC system that focuses on, meets the standards, focuses on and meets the standards for collection storage. Uh, all of the proposed work will be undertaken in accordance with the Secretary of the Interior Standards and Guidelines for the Treatment of Historic Properties. And as I'm sure you're um, aware, you are but one of a number of approvals that um, the museum um, always has to go through. But in, in this instance, uh, beyond the local approvals, uh, disability uh, planning, um, we also have state approvals uh, under the easement and the Massachusetts Architectural Access Board and under Section 106 of the National Historic Preservation Act because of the um, grant from the NEH. So we are underway with a good number of approvals and appreciate you being here to help us through this one. At the exterior, the proposed work occurs predominantly in two areas at the west uh, elevation on the left behind numerous shrubs, which is where um, the proposal uh, replaces one AC condenser with two. And on the west, excuse me, on the east elevation on the right um, uh, is, which is a more, vis is more visible area from the public way. Um, and I'll go into some detail of uh, what is happening on that, um, in that area of the building. So there are a number of um, elements to the exterior work of this project. Um, at the east elevation, there is the reconstruction of the areaway foundation entrance step and plank doors. So that's basically the bulkhead um, and access into the, to the uh, cellar of the building. The proposal is to remove the 20th century Bilco door, uh, excavate and remove the deteriorated stone and brick foundation walls. Um, uh, install new concrete footing and brick foundation walls, uh, along with natural cement pargeting and waterproof membra membrane over new foundation walls. Um, install new subsurface footing drain and extend piping to a new headwall structure. Um, at the interior of this bulkhead, um, which isn't visible uh, from the exterior, um, we'll be reusing bluestone treads over new brick supports. 
Um, there will then be uh, new plank constructed wood uh, doors with a painted finish and period hardware to replace the metal uh, doors. Then of course the area will be backfilled with finished grading and grass seeding. Uh, the next area uh, is looking east uh, uh, up toward the ramp, looking east over toward the homestead. Um, and this is a membrane waterproofing and subsurface drainage, um, subsurface drainage work at the foundation of the main block. Um, you can see in the, the detail uh, at the bottom that um, water is routinely making its way into the cellar of the building which is causing environmental issues within the building. So this is one of the areas that needs um, good attention uh, in order to get the internal environment, interior environment uh, stabilized. Um, so this will involve just you know, temporarily removing, uh, removing the ramp. Um, it will be reinstalled at the end of the work along the north wall of the foundation, which will be exposed um, and um, there'll be um, stabilization at any um, uh, stones, missing mortar, um, deep point, deep pointed, deep pointing at the mortar joints as necessary. Um, they'll be raking the existing stone foundation mortar joints to key in new pargeting and uh, installing a waterproof membrane over the existing foundation wall. Again, this is subsurface. Uh, there'll also be a new foundation drain around the north and east sides of the main block with uh, piping extending out. Um, all of this will be, all of this work will be undertaken in a way that is protecting an already existing subsurface uh, drainage, um, drainage and utility um, work in this area. And this just shows you the plan, which I uh, know was submitted as part of our package um, to just indicate what is generally happening in this area. Um, as I said, the ramp will be taken out. The work will be um, performed at the um, foundation and also in, in a roof area that we'll talk about in a minute. And then the ramp will be reinstalled and refinished and there'll be um, backfill grading, obviously seating and crushed stone uh, at the path. At the roof, um, you can see in the upper left corner, this is a very shallowly pitched roof. Um, this is, I'm gonna go back one, uh, one image. Or two, so let me go back one more image, maybe even one more. So this roof is right uh, along the um, uh, left or south edge as you're walking up the ramp. So it's the roof above this section of the building. It's a very shallow pitch. The goal of this is it's an area that collects a lot of moisture, uh, leaves, uh, water runoff from the roof has been a chronic problem. Um, so the, the goal here is to deepen the existing uh, gutter to really allow water to flow um, more successfully uh, away from and off the roof. Um, so membrane roofing will be removed, uh, blocking and fascia in the built up gutter will also be removed. There'll be new uh, raised wood blocking attached to the roof sheathing that will deepen, as I mentioned, the gutter profile. And then there'll be a new uh, single ply, ply uh, gutter liner, uh, membrane flashed with, um, uh, flashed into the adjacent membrane roof, um, and obviously new wire downspout strainer and um, new uh, drip edge, metal drip edge flashing. There'll be some chimney repairs that will also uh, continue to um, uh, help prevent water intrusion into the building. Uh, the east chimney uh, detailed on the left uh, was reconstructed at some point, but the west chimney uh, retains its historic appearance. So um, some non-historic uh, material, the exhaust hood and support brackets will be removed from the east chimney and the chimney will be uh, reconstructed to support, um, well, to match the west chimney and then to um, uh, support a new chimney cap 
Um, so in other words, restoring a historic appearance. There'll also be a new concealed stainless steel plate and clamping ring to support the existing flue liner within the chimney. And then a new blue stone chimney cap topping the chimney. Um, part of this project uh, also involves a lot of interior work, some of it non-mechanical um, and other parts of it uh, systems related. Um, as part of the systems uh, project at the interior, the existing uh, AC condenser at the west, kind of northwest end of the um, proper of the yard, you can see where the red arrow is, so it's behind shrubs, some of you are probably familiar with it, not visible from the street, um, shielded by vegetation. Uh, the one uh, AC unit will be replaced uh, by two units. And um, finally, under the um, west porch, so under uh, this porch, um, there is a cellar window. Um, the proposal is to um, carefully take out the existing sash window, store it on site and install uh, one new louvered aluminum screen within the existing window frame uh, as part of the systems upgrade. Um, and that is hidden underneath the porch and by the porch lattice, so not visible. And that is uh, the scope of the exterior work for which we are um, looking for a certificate of appropriateness. Is, um, shall I keep sharing my screen, Ben, uh, in case there are questions? Um, sure, yeah, there might be specific questions about okay. aspects of the work. Okay. I'm happy to answer any questions. And as you know, Jane is also here and she can answer questions. I have a question. <clears throat> can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> the, the, the woodlands behind the house, I live on Leslie Street on the other side. And the, those woodlands that have house a lot of wildlife that roams the neighborhood from time to time. And I'm, I'm wondering if that will be affected or if, if that will maintain its, it, as of now, naturalistic uh, landscape there. Uh, well, we aren't proposing any changes to that area as part of this project, and I, I haven't heard that there mm -hmm. will be any proposal for changes there, but I'll let Jane jump in. Yeah, there's nothing of that sort is proposed for this project, um, and there are no fixed plans at this point for, for changes. Okay, thank you. I'm, I'm curious as to who, I'm not even sure who owns that, that little forest that's behind the house between the back of the house and Leslie Street. Is that the Dickinson property or is that Amherst College property, that little woodland? It is Amherst College property. All, all, um, all Emily Dickinson Museum property is Amherst College property. Oh, I see. Mm -hmm. and, and there is a, the, the dormitory at mm -hmm. the top of the hill mm -hmm. that is Amherst College. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So this, it's quite a little wildlife haven there, you know, for better or worse, but, but that has to be, you know, fox and bears and whatever. Okay, thank you. Anybody else have questions or comments for Bruce? Um, not surprisingly, I, I think it's a, a very thoroughly thought out and documented uh, um, a piece of work or collections of pieces of work. And I looked uh, closely, Shanti, at what you were uh, showing. I was leaning in, I have a big screen. I could see <laughs> most of uh, the detail. I could read some of it and, uh, or a lot of it actually. Um, and uh, I think I understand pretty well what you're doing. It's certainly, uh, as far as the, you know, largely driven by water, I guess, in that area. <laughs> Um, seems to be very important uh, work to do, and um, obviously everybody would be very pleased that it's uh, that, that you're able to do it and to do it uh, apparently so um, in a, such a robust fashion. Uh, 
the I, I notice uh, I'm somewhat surprised that, but it, it's clear there that you're taking up the uh, ramp or or whatever portion of the ramp and then and then uh, replacing it and resealing it. That seemed to be uh, um, just regular wood. It seemed to be not terribly con good condition and looked like it might not last very long. But uh, I I guess you you must. Uh, 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 have thought that through and so forth. Um, and in every other respect, it seems to be uh, uh, robust in both uh, from, from terms of its historical appropriateness and in terms of the building science and water exclusion uh, um, strategies that you've uh, adopted uh, in service of solving the problems you have. So I, uh, again, I have no questions, but I thought um, I should at least make some comment to indicate that I wasn't asleep while you were talking. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I, you know, I, I don't know how old the ramp is. I'm sure Jane does. Um, and I suspect that the architects have taken a pretty close look. This is a team that's been on the scene at um, the Emily Dickinson Museum for a long time. And Hopefully, um, they're, they're alert to what the conditions of the ramp are and uh, what will be yes. involved. And it's really not any of my business. I just, uh, you showed me a photograph look right down the ramp, and I looked at the photograph, and, and it, it, uh, it looked like well, you might be back. It looked like you might be back shortly, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, well, certainly, if, if there is, um, obviously, if there is any change to the plan to simply reinstall the existing ramp, um, uh, you know, we, we uh, presumably will be back before you if, uh, well, maybe, if that or, comes yeah. to pass. I mean, maybe consider the de minimis change if you're uh, so, but, but it's, no, we, we've spent too long on this already. <laughs> I'm happy to answer any other questions if you have any. I don't have any questions just to, um compliment both you and Jane Shantia for the excellent work you've done and it. it's such a valuable property and we're just glad to be small participants ourselves in keeping it uh, going. Great. Well, that, that's very nice of you. I have to say, I've only been on the scene for about a year, Jim. Um, this project has been in the works and and in a number of iterations to really arrive at what the best possible plan is uh, since 2018. So it's really Jane who has shepherded this along. Yeah. Thank, thank you all for your comments about um, the, the work that we're trying to accomplish and the importance of this property and its structures uh, for a long time to come. Does anybody else have any comments or questions from the commission? More, just brief, more as a neighbor than as a, a commissioner, but both. I'm delighted. I mean, just it, it, it was so privileged to live in this in one of the historic houses and in the district, and with the the care of those the houses, the Dickinson houses, is just so important a part of our lives and the community. Thank you so much. Great, thank you. Um, ben, is there anybody who, in the public who would want to comment? No, I don't think so. Maybe I could do what I should have done last time and, <laughs> <laughs> and yes. move to close the public hearing. Second. Can we do it on a show of hands, Ben, or does it have to be? Yep. Yeah, as long as, yep. yep. Is everyone okay closing the public hearing at this point? Yep. Peggy? Yep. Yeah. Peggy? Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if there's no, well, even if there is, I could uh, uh, start the ball rolling again by uh, moving to grant uh, the uh, project at. Uh, uh, 214 Main Street, the Evergreens, uh, uh, a certificate of appropriateness uh, 
uh, finding that the proposed work meets the review criteria expressed in sections 8.1 and 2 of the Amherst Local Historic Bylaw and uh, that the proposal is compatible completely so with the appearance of the neighbourhood and won't have an epic negative impact on the Dickinson Local Historic district uh, uh, that, uh, that the, the certificate be granted uh, uh, in con as uh, uh, without conditions and, and based on the uh, documentation submitted. So motion. Okay, um, do, can we vote now? Yes. Okay, uh, Bruce Goldham. Vote yes. Jim Lumley. I approve. Peggy Schwartz. I approve. Greta Wilcox. I approve. Karen Winter. I approve. And I'm Judy Strayer and I approve. So it's unanimous. Great, thanks uh, Jane and Shanti for coming today. Thank you. Thank, thanks to you all on the commission and for the, the wonderful work you're doing. And we're doing together. <laughs> yes, I was going to say that you certainly are holding up your end of whatever table it is that we're grasping. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Great. Thanks, everyone. It's been a while since we had public hearings. There was kind of a slowdown in the uh, during the winter, but I think applications mm. are starting to pick back up now. So. Okay. Will we be able to meet in person at some point or with the changes in COVID and the guidelines for- Yeah, so we're, we're, we're authorized to, to meet um, via Zoom until July 15th. That's when the um, governor's emergency order ends. Um, more likely than not, there will be legislation passed to, to extend that is kind of our expectation, at least to have Zoom as an option. But um, uh, so until then, we'll probably meet um, remotely. Mm -hmm. And then I think, you know, I, there's also, you know, there, there's space limitations in, in town hall. Still, there's you know oc occupancy limits on some of the on on some of the rooms. Oh, I see. And yeah. so it's also you know if every board and committee moves towards meeting in person, then it's mm -hmm. going to be challenging to find space. <laughs> but um, yeah, we can definitely talk about that you know as we get closer to to midsummer. Mm -hmm. I think there there's pros and cons of of meeting on Zoom. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so next on the agenda, we have a, uh, it's the public meeting portion of the agenda. Um, I've invited uh, Michael Ching from, uh, he's a resident at 17 Elm Street to discuss his window replacement project with us. Um, so Judy, is it okay if I invite yes, Michael please. in? Yeah. Yep, please do. Hi everyone. Hello. Hi. Hi. So uh, I'm Michael Cheng, and, and this is my wife Heather Adams. Um, and we we moved into 17 Elm Street in October. Um, and we are we are expecting a baby in the next couple of weeks. And uh, and so um, we've been having to get our house deleaded. Um, and the main part of the deleading process has been replacing the windows. Um, so we. Um, you know, we we got some. Uh, so our, our delegger ordered some uh, some windows from from Pella. Um, and the, the main, I think, the main question um, for the commission is is to do with the the grills on the windows. Um, so our, our house currently has uh, twelve over twelve grills. Um, so the you know we we you know we talked with the with with someone from Pella about the um, the options for the grills. Um, they they told us that the to to get twelve over twelve we would have to um, you know move up to a, a more expensive uh, type of of window so we you know what we've 
what what we've chosen are the um, you know the the sort of the uh, lowest level wood windows. Um, they said the Pella people said we couldn't get the twelve over twelve grills with that kind of window, um, and they also they gave us a, a quote for the for six over six um, grills for for those windows, which they said was the um, what we could get, um, and and that quote was um, already uh, quite a lot more. Um, you know, we we were taking out a, a loan to pay for the deleading in the first place, um, and we we didn't want to have to also pay for the grill. So um, so we were hoping to. Um, you know, to have the windows replaced uh, and not, um, you know, not not add the the grills on on top. Um, so I think that that summarizes the situation. Ben, is was there anything else that we should say? Um, no, I think you know that that uh, kind of is an overview of the you know situation you're in, and um, I think the that's just the reality of it. I think with the, with the deletting process, you're, you're kind of had a sense of urgency, obviously to get, to get that done. Um, and so I guess the question for the commission is, um, you know, obviously there is a, an avenue for, you know, a certificate of hardship, which I, I don't know if I've been a part of, of that, an issuance of such certificate, but, you know, this could be an instance where that, where that's considered if, um, meeting the threshold of you know replacing the windows is is you know a financial burden um and so i guess i just you know wanted to rather than you know in the past for some minor projects like this i've sent an email around to say hey you know what do you, what does everyone think about this but i thought this kind of roasts the occasion of it would be nice to have a discussion about it amongst the commission members here so um, would it be helpful if I, I can share, a, I have Google Street View here and I can just show the, the house and its um, condition with the 12 over 12 grills run Elm Street here. So the between Lincoln and Sunset. Mm -hmm. And the house, um, I, I sent around the form B for the house. So it's, I think it was, it was a mid-century house. So not kind of part of the, you know, historically um significant period of the you know historic district per se um it still obviously is a ni nicely constructed house it's not like some of the other what we call the intrusions in the in the district it's a it's a much more yeah. elegant uh cape design um with a set, nice center chimney um yes uh, uh ben that chimney is uh consistent with a very very old house it's uh, right. right in the center and it's very big uh, Michael, how many uh, flues do you have in that chimney? Do you know? Um, no, I, I don't know. <laughs> it's okay. It's it's it. Uh, when when I first look at the house, I thought, oh, that's pretty old, um, based simply on the fact that uh, in the old days, uh, the chimneys were in the center of the house. They had fireplaces and and boilers for, for so forth, and even ovens sometimes, and. Uh, and the mass of the chimney was in the center. And then as the houses, uh, as time went by, the, uh, they, they migrated to each end when, uh, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, for various reasons. Uh, um, so. It was built uh, in 1940, at least. Yeah. Say that. <laughs> yes, and, and it's, you would think, well, I guess they kept the chimney in the center, but in 1940, you would have thought there would have only been one flue and mm. uh or maybe two actually and uh, that just looks well it, it just looks like there's four flues there at least and uh, so that it's just a puzzle i made some comment uh, i think in a previous hearing about one of the houses on sunset where i we had a similar scale chimney and it was credited with being 1942 and i i challenged the uh the uh, applicant uh, 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 to, to saying, are you really sure of that? Because it really looked like it was much older. So now I'm looking at another chimney, but perhaps with even sharper provenance. So I, I think I'm going to have to fold on my historic uh, <laughs> dating based on chimneys. Yeah. <laughs> um, a question related to the... Um, so you're asking us whether we could, uh, whether you could replace the chimney replace the windows 
with no grills at all. Is that correct? That, that's right. That's yes. Right. Um, before we, uh, or, or one, 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 one suggestion that or thought I could offer, and it may be too late, but um, with a farmhouse in North Amherst, uh, it being a, um, a historic, uh, at least we uh, had work done with funds from the CPA through the historic preservation portal. So we were not replacing windows. We were, um, because of that, we were uh, deleting them uh, and repairing them and reinstalling them. And we came across a really wonderful uh, team of women, a female operated workshop called the Old Window Workshop in Springfield. Um, a woman, wonderful woman who runs a business where she employs a lot of uh, younger and less advantaged women. And they did a really good job uh, and uh, possibly competitive with replacing the windows. So I'll just mention that if you wanted to follow it up, it's called the Old Window Workshop uh, in, in Springfield. Um, but you would uh, basically be reinstalling the existing windows with new glass and new uh, 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 repairing the sashes and repainting them and so forth with paint that was um, not lead. So I, I should say that, um, and, and you know, Ben told us before this was okay. We've 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 already gone ahead with with doing the window replacement, um, you know, because of the the urgency of the deleading with the the baby arriving soon. So, um, so we've you know our deleders have actually been working over the last couple of weeks on on the window replacement, um, without without grills at the moment, um, and and so I I. I I guess I think the, the ship has sailed on on that suggestion, unfortunately. Um, okay, that's that's that's, but, that's fine. Uh, so so the windows would go in, and then the, so the question before us is whether you buy the grill inserts and snap them in place. Is yeah, that correct? That, that's right. That that's right. Okay. Rita, I just also wondered if community preservation grant money might be available for. Um, doing work like this? Because I know they like to do uh, grants for private homes as well as um, other things. Um, yeah, I think we could potentially explore that. My only concern is that um, typically with, with CPA funds, the applicant is then required to have a preservation restriction placed on their house. I see. Okay. And you know, at, you know, at a certain point, this you know, this house is already in the local historic district, so yeah. there okay. there is a there is a level of protection there. Um, I've never been part of a CPA grant for like a small project. Typically, you know, CPA grants are given out in the tens or hundreds of thousands of dollars for larger re preservation or restoration efforts. Um, but you know, I think. Um, so I don't know, I, I could definitely inquire about that. It could yeah. also just be something that we suggest as an alternative to people because yeah. everything's so expensive, but yeah. anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, one thing though, Ben, I, I do know about with CPA to my uh, cost, uh, well, to, uh, to my, uh, sadly, yeah. is that um, the CPA won't reimburse. So if, if uh, so I suppose the windows haven't been purchased, so the, the grills at least. Grills. So you would have to make sure, make clear that these, uh, that you're making an application to purchase the grounds to snap into the existing windows. Um, and so long as you don't buy them beforehand and, and seek uh, reimbursement, you've got a case, but if you, you they will not reimburse you for expenses, uh, um, at least they made that very clear to, to me uh, mm -hmm. and the North Amherst Community Farm. Right. right. Uh, Karen? Yeah, uh, I, I wonder, do, do you, um, it seems like the windows are already in, I congratulate you. I know what a horrible thing it is to have lead paint when a baby is coming. Um, so it's good that you're being safe. I, I think if you uh, 
if you pursue this, it might be really worth it that you say, you know, that this is a lovely little house in keeping with the neighborhood, uh, apply for a grant and see if you can get it. And if you get it, if you would like to, then install the grills, uh, that, that might be the way to go. And it's nice to hear about, about this grant helping people to uh, preserve, especially with lead windows. I'm, I'm now in the picture with that too, with a, with a big house that has lead windows. And it's just exorbitantly expensive to do lead windows. So, mm -hmm. um, and, and these houses are, the, the windows were so beautiful and it was mm -hmm. somehow so attractive, but I'm, I'm very happy that you're being safe and I'm so glad that you're having a baby. So congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we we did pay extra to um, have wood windows um, because we know we're in the historic district. We could have saved a lot of money by just getting vinyl. Um, and you know, now that they've gotten rid of the storm windows, it's actually a lot easier to see the um, unique interior shutters um, when you shut the shutters. It, it wasn't very easy to see them before That's um, true. because of the storm windows being there. Mm -hmm. um yeah so um I'm, I'm just feeling a bit stressed out because we have a number of other it really exactly. important house repairs we have to do um with funds too and um they're not aesthetic they're functional so and okay. also we both work full-time I'm only taking two weeks of maternity leave so I don't think I'm going to be able to apply for grants in my <laughs> free time but Hopefully, maybe Michael. We, but, 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 thank you for these suggestions. Yeah. Yeah, we can, I mean, we can definitely look into that. And I, I yeah. didn't know anything about the the, yeah. the community preservation grant, so we can we can definitely look into that. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Greta, I was just going to say it's a gorgeous house. Is it a Bill Gas house? Do you know? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a beautiful. And congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Bruce. Um, uh, let me say something that's kind of. Um, potentially heretical here, but given that it's uh, notwithstanding what I said before, that it looked like it was from the 18th century because of the chimney, but in fact, it's uh, uh, from uh, my parents' generation and quite recent and so forth, that these um, these grills, these muntins, as they were really called when they really were, uh, were for the purpose of uh, accommodating a large window space with very small panes of glass because that was the technology of the day. Um, so we can say, well, it's a historic district and a lot of the windows in the district are like that. And therefore perhaps we should think in terms of having grills. On the other hand, you could say one, this house is not of that vintage, even though it is in the district, it's already constructed in 1940. It never really had uh, these um, uh, the need of these small windows, and once you replace them the, with a very large pane of glass, which is the the way windows are done now, how important is it? How for us, and 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 how how definitely do we believe that it is appropriate to put this fake? Uh, uh, construct over the over this glass certainly from the interior point of view it means you can't see out as easily so it doesn't it doesn't uh, improve the uh, functionality of the building um, so i would argue and and you've heard me on this before on other occasions that we should contemplate that it is appropriate to in this instance, to uh, not require the replacement of the grills with fake grills in a house that is not historic in the era of mountains, which these never were. How do we feel about that? Greta? Sorry. I agree with Bruce. Um, I think that the windows were charming, but the house is still charming. Um, I just thought if the homeowners wanted to um, use the historic, the community preservation grant, but I didn't think it should be a requirement. 
So, uh, Jim, did you have a comment too? Yes. I wonder if uh, that's one of the houses that Bill Gas took out of the uh, Quabbin Reservoir area. Oh, interesting. Uh, that is specifically, I mean, he did that up on Mount Pleasant and some other locations. And uh, do you, uh, Michael, uh, do you have a sense that the frame itself is is relatively modern wood that would have been in 1940s or is, or is it old, uh, perhaps <laughs> hewn wood? I, I really don't know. Uh, we've, we've heard people suggest it might have been, might be one of the houses that came from the Quabbin, but but I don't think anyone anyone no. knows for sure, or at least we haven't we haven't heard anything definitive. And there are a number of moisture problems, so it certainly could have been, <laughs> come from the lake. <laughs> but we we are wondering that we're not sure. Yeah, I I, I could actually say that um, I I don't live in the district, I, but I live on East Pleasant in the Mount in the Mount Pleasant neighborhood, and um, my house looks like your house with a gambrel cape roof, and it. From what we know, um, it was built in the early 19th century, but it was renovated by Bill Gass in the wow. mid 19th century. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of the same details, you know, large central chimney. Um, and when we replaced our windows probably 10 or 12 years ago, we, we did do the six over six, but that's because that was what our, at our house and it was, um, you know, at the time it, it at the time it made sense, but I I feel looking at your house that not having the grills is perfectly reasonable. Yeah, I mean, I personally, um, I guess I do feel quite claustrophobic with the grills. It reminds me from the inside. I'm talking about it reminds me of a sort of prison cell experience. So I I would and I, I spend a lot of time at home. So I love to look out the window. And it, it's just personally very nice for me, the idea of not having the grills from the inside, even though I love historic features of houses and I love looking at the architecture of all the houses in our neighborhood, just from the inside, from being at home a lot, it would be really nice to have a, a better view. Hey, Jim? I just want to add, would there be any chance of putting the uh, 12 over 12 inserts on the four front windows? So that from the street, it keeps its appearance. So Pella, Pella told us we can't have 12 over 12 with the windows that we bought. We would have had to buy their highest tier wood window to be able to even have 12 over 12 from them. I mean, we, we don't, I mean, there might be, we, we haven't, you know, we haven't looked into it. There might be a way to, to get 12 over 12 from, so someone else that this was just what we were told by the by Pella originally so yeah I, but, uh, it did uh, perhaps you needed to well, well let me let me phrase it this way a handy carpenter could make those muttons on there it's it's not that difficult a job as the machinery involved is very little and it would give you an opportunity to uh, you know keep some of the historical look for that house. I, I think, I mean, I got to admit, I'm prejudiced. I, I do like the 12 over 12, and that's the house I live in that did come from the Quabbin. But mm -hmm. um, when, you, when you knock those windows down and make it just one big sheet of glass, or even if it's into four or six pieces, it really does change the architectural feature of that house, visually anyway. But you know, I, I certainly do admire you doing the following the lead paint law and doing that. I'm an agent, so I know the importance of dealing with lead paint. I I wonder. I mean, I I, I had I'm, I'm hesitant to say this because I haven't done enough research. But just walking around our neighborhood, I've noticed that many of our neighbors don't have grills and their houses are older. So I don't know what the historical implications of that are. Maybe the historic district came after they changed their windows, mm -hmm. but it seems like there aren't many and houses. That doesn't there. make it right. Yeah, yeah. okay. <laughs> so, so it's not a good argument then. I, I, as I said, it, I, I haven't That's looked at it. we have a uh, historic district convention, just maybe yeah. pre present some uh, extremes of that. Okay. Uh, a point of order, I guess. Uh, uh, 
um, Jane, uh, are we, we're not actually here to make a decision. This is an informational hearing, is that correct? Um, I think there should be some clarity on, on how um, Michael, and sorry, I didn't catch your name. I'm Heather. Heather. Heather, Michael and yeah. Heather can move forward, but um, I didn't have the opportunity to advertise this as a, a public hearing for a certificate of appropriateness. So it's more, I guess, like an advisory. Okay, so some, some declaration on the part of the commission is, is called for. I just wanted to know yeah. what the end uh, objective was here. Well, it's interesting. I listened to Jim and he's persuasive. And um, but I, there's two ways of thinking about this. And uh, I, I think the idea of, of uh, um, how, uh, Michael, Heather, how many windows in total are you taught, have you replaced? We, we've had eight, 18 windows replaced. 18. And how many are on the front? There's four, four along the front, the front four. side facing the street. So Jim's talking about doing something particular for four out of 18 windows. And, and that, that sounds like a good path to compromise here. Greta, Greta? I, I'm actually looking right at your house from my window. <laughs> oh, you, it's like Sarah Palin, huh? Yeah, <laughs> I can show you. Um, there you go. But I don't, um, it's an interesting idea to have the front four windows, but I think in this, the way this house is situated, it would look odd to have four windows with the panels and the other ones not because from the street, you see the whole house or mm -hmm. you see the sides of the house too. So I would okay. disagree. Well, you're the, you're the, you're the, you're the resident expert, obviously. Um. I <laughs> So, <coughs> I, no, I have a comment as well. Um, just talking about doing the inserts, um, while it, I think it might give you the visible division from the exterior, it still, to me, looks, I don't know, less than historic, I would say. Um, not, I'm not a big fan of them, and, and they break. And if you're going to have children running around, they're, you know, there are potential to be just yanked out and broken. Um, and I just, there I guess I don't see them as that historically accurate, so. Mm -hmm. I think it's an anachronism. I think the world has moved forward. And uh, I mean, it, it, I, I really respect Jim's argument and I, I, uh, and I, he's absolutely right. You know, this commission was, was put together to to stop backsliding that in many cases already happened. And in fact, the argument that was successful in persuading the town to vote to create us was the kind of backsliding that you mentioned, Heather, uh, in, in, a, in, 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 in an instance of, and, and Jim's absolutely right. Um, on the other hand, um, I'm now engaged in, in my own head, what is appropriate here and it just seems to me, I agree with um, with Judy that this is the ship has sailed on on windows. I think uh, because of the way in which we do windows now, and and how difficult and uh, and un, uh, unnatural almost really. Yes, it is actually from a from a, an industrial point of view unnatural. It is to produce. Uh, uh, divided light windows in the current era when we're you know all uh, when we're in the direction we're going which is you know trying to provide comfort and 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 uh, and performance and durability in houses um it's we we've, we've we've our windows have gone in a direction and so the story of this neighborhood uh as you know in years hence will be how we've not i believe how we've uh, maintained the everything uh, consistent with the um, 19th century, but how we've allowed the 20th and then now the 21st century to graciously and appropriately fold itself into the initial fabric of the, uh, uh, the founding you know, characteristics of the di district. And so uh, for that reason, I'm with you, Judy, and saying that, that uh, 
the, the windows, the, they've replaced them with wood windows, they've replaced the windows, we've got past lead and so forth, and they've made a, a solid effort. And I, I don't think that um, we should uh, feel obligated to um, require mountains and whether that's um, done by, by virtue of a motion to grant a certificate of hardship or whether it's just that do we declare the absence of the mountains appropriate it from a precedent point of view Ben it might be better to well I don't know actually because there's two different routes here if we declare that uh, that mountains are uh, um, not necessary for appropriateness we've created a precedent of that case if we declare a certificate of hardship, we've said, well, you know, we're going to forgive people um, spending money if they've got other things they'd rather mm -hmm. spend it on. So, I mean, the, both of those paths from, could be considered invidious. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, this is a small question, Michael, uh, that you raise, but I think it's not insignificant mm -hmm. for us uh, how we go on this. Um, uh, I know how I would, I've, I've made my case and that's, that would be the, the way I will think mm -hmm. on it, but I definitely recognize that there are other ways, um, there are other ways to think about this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think um, some sort of more like an advisory opinion or something could, could work here, you know, recognizing that they've, um, one, there is lead abatement involved, which is you know a unique aspect too they they did get the wood windows which was a yes. step higher um and you know just you know based on that that you know in this case the exact replication would not be required and also the you know the 12 by 12 you know exact replication necess necessitated even a step higher in terms of um window uh you know ex expense i guess um so you know, I don't think it necessarily needs to be a precedent setting for, for the, you know, every decision on windows made in the future. I guess there are some, hmm. in my mind, I see some specific. So if, if I was going to create a motion of some sort that would at least help us move forward, even if we defeated it, um, <laughs> uh, it, what is, what it would be, how would I, how would, it, how would I phrase it? Uh, I, mean, I, I could. It's not necessarily that we're declaring that it's appropriate to forgo the 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 mountains, or, or is it? I mean, uh, to, would it be that this commission uh, does not feel obligated to require the app uh, the they're not even applicants at this point? I mean, the the petitioner to uh, mm -hmm. uh, to. Uh, to, uh, in, uh, to to install uh, mountains in the in the. In the Divided lights, or at least similar, uh, whatever the grills, I guess grills, grills denoting uh, mountains to divide lights in the new in the eighteen new windows that they've installed as part of a delaying process, something like that. I think. Yeah. Now the thing is that uh, the saving grace for this is that we this can be this can be undone. We could if we if we were to vote to approve a motion of that sort, we could come back a year later and override it because mountains, it's not like this, the ship is never going to sail. <laughs> you can always snap in some mountains. Right. So if for some reason that it's, it, it, we're, it's, we're made to appreciate that we've made a mistake or that, you know, it's, cre it's it, it made a mistake, we can undo it. So at that, to that extent, at least, we're not, um, we're not getting, we're not likely to get ourselves in trouble. Um, I, I think we're also doing this specific to this one project, though. We're trying I, to. Yes. You know, this one house, which the scale, the scale of the house not having mountains is different than a much larger house with many more windows that are visible, you know, that you would expect to have them. Um, yeah. That's, I mean, to me, that's what, you know, would not be, would, would not create a precedent, you know, that would cause issues, I guess. Jim, Jim may have a. I'd be very concerned about creating a precedent that, um, but with a little. Uh, but, but could we grant this based on, uh, you know, the fact that it's not really a older house, 
since it was built mid-century. Mm -hmm. Perhaps yes, I th uh, I th hardship in, in that sense so that we don't get caught down the way saying everybody's coming to us and, and going to have open windows. Mm. Yeah, you got um, it. yeah. Yeah, I mean, Ben, one way to do this, I, I agree with, uh, with, with Jim. I think that really is the, the core, a, a mm -hmm. core uh, uh, condition or, or proviso. Um, I'm going to ask you, do you, um, would it be appropriate to ask you to not exactly draft a motion, but to, to, to draft an opinion that say that we could then adopt? Because I'm thinking that um, it might be better if, if, if instead of trying to draft this uh, on the fly right now, that if you were to write something up, um, I would be happy for you to send it to me and, and, and I'm sure Jim would too, uh, and anybody else, so that we can get the wording of it the way we feel is constructive, but with a view to um, uh, relieving Michael and Heather of the obligation of purchasing and installing these grills. But if, if, if they know, if you too, uh, Michael and Heather, if you know that that's the direction we're trying to head in, but that we would like to do it in a way that doesn't come back to bite us or you. Um, I'm wondering, Ben, whether uh, drafting an opinion that yep. we could then adopt as a commission, um, enfolding Jim's observations and, and everyone's you know, uh, duties and, and so forth, um, would you be, is that something that you would be uh, prepared that it's appropriate for you to do yep yeah i can do that and i'll commit to reviewing um the paragraph or two that you might write and uh so don't feel that you have to polish it up too much just get it down and then and then the rest of us can comment and then we can we can take it up at our next meeting okay does that seem to work i think that works okay. works for me yeah. yeah, Peggy. Yeah, we're, it work, that works works for me. I think that to give the homeowners as much um, leeway into whether they want to be living with those crosshatch inserts that are not part of the original part of the house that they purchased. I, I, that's that's where my uh, I'm, I'm not sure of the legality of my thinking, but that's certainly where my sympathies sympathies lie. The first house that. Uh, that we bought when we moved here was in Pelham and it had these window, it was a new house that was supposed to look sort of cabiny and it had these window insert things in them. And they were really, they just felt, they were just blocking my view of, this, of the woods behind the house, blah, blah, blah. You know, first thing we did was take those things out. They were not part, they were not integral really to the house. And, and this, this feels a little bit like sort of my, trying to micromanage uh, a decision for a family that that's, has an aesthetic preference that sounds strong. So I'm not sure if that's helpful or not, but that's 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 the way I'm leaning. Great, thanks, Peggy. Um, unless there's any other questions or comments, um, I'll draft up the uh, opinion and I can send it around. But um, I think for and. For now, Michael and Heather are all set. Yeah, thank you so much for coming. Thank, thank you. Thank you all very much. Thanks for your thank consideration. You. Congratulations. Thank <laughs> you. All best wishes. Thank you. Um, great. All right. Thanks all. Are we? We still have everyone, right? Yeah. Um, just we lost our attendees here. So. Um, next on the agenda is just to check in about the um, study committee and kind of. I think um, Pat's still here. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah. Pat Off is still here. So I think um, the discussion about the subcommittee, I, I uh, just wanted to, I guess, recognize. Yeah. I think so for committee meetings that are, I think I'd kind of uh, in my mind separated meetings that are more of like work 
related like if you, if you guys are meeting to look over research and put together a narrative and i think that is obviously difficult to do um over zoom and and in a planned setting so i i had said that that can be exempt from you know needing to be in public meetings but for more like goal setting and check-ins and discussion on strategy i think it's important that the those types of meetings happen in a public setting um, whether it's over Zoom or perhaps in the future, could, those could be in person as well. Um, yes, I think the the uh, the deliberative, uh, sorry, the the, it, it, the 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 gold standard, I guess, is the is our site meetings. We go there to gather data, and so so long as these unpublished, uh, un you know, unposted meetings are of more than two people are for gathering data, I think uh, we would just say it's the same as a site meeting. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yeah. I mean, we would have to, in our own minds, uh, uh, behave uh, behave appropriately. Right. Which is, you know, requires a small <laughs> amount of discipline, I dare say, <laughs> which I'm sure we're capable of rising to. <laughs> So yeah, what are folks thinking about the um, study committee, or where where is the? I haven't. It's been a while since I guess I've heard a progress report and discussion about next steps. Aaron. Aaron? Yeah. Um, yeah, you haven't gotten any progress reports because there hasn't been much progress then, because we haven't really met and uh, being alone. I think um, uh, Jim, the last time we met at Jennifer's, and I, you know, I apologize because I invited Pat and Hetty and I called it like goals and strategizing when really it's, I shouldn't have called it that because what we want to do is figure out how to work together to, to have progress. And in order to have that progress, we, it would have been very helpful to get a little bit more background information from Pat and Hetty, who seem to know have have a, a lot more expertise than the four of us, um, especially now that we've lost Jennifer, because Jennifer, through her husband, who was part of this original team, uh, had much more information of how it came that our historical district has the boundaries that it does and how to expand. So I was just hoping that we would get that information and be able to incorporate it into how are we going to present this? What's useful? How are we gonna bring our separate uh, research of our five houses or four houses or six houses together in a form that's that's useful? Um, yeah, so I still, I guess that does clarify it. We just have to call it a work meeting because that's what it is. All we, I mean, that's all we, mm -hmm. we can do. And I think that is um, pretty, I don't know. I think that means that it would be good for all of us to be together um, that are on this subcommittee and also to be able to invite other people and then just make sure that we're not, that, that it's work. How are we gonna put it together? What information, how are we gonna bind it? where are we going to go from there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Um, the, uh, going back to this, the how this issue first got raised, um, did it come directly to our commission from the his regular historic commission or from the town manager? Um, because I, I guess before we jump into specifics about organizing each of the properties, I feel like we need to more even, even just have an overall goal of what is it we're trying to do with this. And because they didn't do it last time, there was a reason for it, you know? Mm -hmm. um, Politics. They specifically, they specifically left that section of North Pleasant Street off and, um, so I guess what what do we need to know that they know, um, you know, and is and is this feasible yeah. in terms of his, you know, 
you know, are these properties actually of historic value? I know some of them are. Um, I, th I think Pat has her hand up. Um, I just thank you for inviting me in, Karen. Thank you for extending the invitation to Hetty and me. I can, I can backtrack a little as a member of the Amherst Historical Commission Great. that we um, became, became concerned about the development on North Pleasant Street and the fact that there are historic houses um, on the west um, side of the street that, and some on the east side of the street. If we were to go um, and start at like CBS and work north. And so I volunteered to pull the form Bs from Macris for all of the properties on North Pleasant Street, starting at CBS and going to um, the end, Kendrick Park. Uh -huh. uh, 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 and I'm forgetting what the cross street is at the end of Kendrick Park. But in any event, I made that all available to the um, local historic district because we were advised that it was the local historic district um, who needed to um, apply for expanding that district. And, and that I think is the term. There is, for those of you who might not be aware, Massachusetts publishes a, a guide to establishing a historic districts, local historic districts. And, and so the first part of that is exactly what you all went through to establish your district. But there is, there is a section that says, what do we do to expand local historic district and essentially you need to do the same process that was done to create the first your your district as it is and I think the first thing is I understood it as a member of the historical Amherst Historic Commission was that you needed to identify the properties you needed to pull form B's you can you can um write form B's for properties that you've researched where they're not a part of MACRIS, but having that data and maybe a little bit of narrative, when I was going through the form B's, many of those properties, even though they have commercial um, additions at the ground level, um, ha have a historic name. And there's information about who the architect was and who the residents were um, initially. And so, that you could build a narrative from that, but I think the, what needs to guide you is is this this document, um, because what what as I understand it, and Ben Ben can take over from here, but as I understand it, get doing all the the homework and all the background of identifying the properties you'd like to expand the district to include. Um, and you need to follow all of the steps as though you were establishing the district for the first time. So I, is that clear? <laughs> did I do, do that all right? Yeah, you did, you did a great job. Yeah. Um, no, thank, thank you. I, no, I, I, I totally under, I under, I, I understand that. Um, mm -hmm. And I live, I live very close to there. And I do not, you know, definitely do not want to see the west side of Kendrick Park become like the east side of, you know, of east of that part of East Pleasant Street with the big buildings. Um, I just guess my concern is why wasn't it, you know, I know it wasn't included in the beginning because of politics, but um, there's 20, 21, 22 properties, I think. Um, and some of them have, some of them have been renovated or changed a lot. So do we, you know, does that change when we apply for the historic district, I guess, um, you know, the ratio of properties that actually are considered historic? Um, I think just as with the Lincoln Sunset District, there can be like a core of historic properties, but then there can always be um, homes that are included in the district, but that are recognized as uh, either, I think they're called in intrusions or, or, or non contributing resources. Or okay, like so the that. ones, yeah. So the ones along 
that um, long north crossings that are old, newer. Okay. Yeah. So Ben, is it possible that for the sake, for, for information for the, this committee, um, the local historic district commission that you could send them the link to the establishing uh, the Massachusetts document establishing a local historic district, because as I understand it, to include those properties on North Pleasant Street, you, you need to um, follow the same guidelines as if you were, that were followed when the district, the local mm -hmm. historic district was created. So it would be really helpful for you with yep. the form B's in hand to follow that guideline to know what you need to do to take these properties and try to expand the district to include them. Mm -hmm. Yep, I can definitely share that. I think that that's a, it's a helpful resource. It is a helpful resource. Um, I have a question. So when they established the original historic district, it was a group of people, but they were not, um, I guess they were not subject, they, they didn't have to abide by the meeting, all the different meeting rules because they were just doing this. No, they did. Yeah. They did? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's, I, I've come across the meeting minutes before and. Yeah, I came I, across some, but I'm just thinking, yeah. I mean, cause back to what Kyron was saying before, that's, I, I just see this as being made more challenging by the fact that so much of it has to be, Yeah. we can't, we can't just like talk about it. Yeah. And that's fine, you know, that's fine. That needs, you know. Um, yeah, I mean, an, another option could be to um, apply for CPA funds to hire a consultant to do the work. <laughs> um, However, I think, well, first of all, the in terms of funding cycles, um, the applications would be due in um, like October. the fall. Yeah, mm -hmm. the fall. And then the money wouldn't become available until July of um, 2023. So um, over the money actually wouldn't become available until like kind of like 15 months from now, um, just because we're just, you know, just after the, the 2022 funding cycle. So um, th there are sometimes exceptions made. They can do off cycle funding requests. And maybe that's something to explore, especially if, if it's only for a few thousand dollars to hire a consultant. Um, mm -hmm. but, but again, I think um, CPA requests have to go before, first of all, the CPA commission and then the town council. And so you're kind of it would require the town council at least to, you know, be enthusiastic and, and support this project, which, you know, they might be, but um, I guess I, it's just to say that when you apply for the funding, it would open yourselves up to kind of closer scrutiny of the project. But. Right. And Ben, I, I remember having some conversation with this group um, that the strategy of when you contact the property owners and when you go public, whether it's asking for CPA funding or, or mm -hmm. another act. Um, and so that I would, I would caution that that's something to consider because um, if you were to move forward with this, and, and I personally think it's an excellent idea, um, the property owners need to know so that, 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 they're they're not the last to know. They they need to know that this is is a, a, a an idea, a concept, and a, a philosophy. Yep. Karen. Um, I think that Jim, Greta, and uh, I have completed our houses. This form B, Pat, that you're talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. Judy is new and she's had to take over for Jennifer. And so these houses are not done, but Judy, we can help you. Um, the library and the reference in the special collections pretty much did the work for. Yeah, Jen Jennifer said she didn't do any, any, unfortunately didn't do any of it. Okay. So she gave me what she had. Um, yeah. 
So I would say you could take your your uh, five, or you said there's six houses that she has, and go. There's actually to there's actually seven because uh, seven. three three forty six, which is kind of behind, tucked behind um, the Mount Pleasant apartments, should be part of should be part of it. She thought. So, so maybe if there's seven. Uh, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't counted. There's either six or seven. But, but so I, I recommend maybe if you can get to four of them and give me one, maybe give Greta one, give Jim one, we're done. We can do one more. You could do those four. And as I said, the reference librarian is so helpful. She'll do it yeah. for you. Then we have these form Bs, Pat, which is what we need. And we can think about the narrative if something special comes up, but we don't have to, you know, when we were meeting before we thought, well, maybe we'll go to the special collections and start reading the history of Amherst, this big volume. And it's a little daunting to do all this work when we don't know. Right, and I don't think you need that much detail, Karen. Right, right. I, so I, that's, think, you, I think you need the, the, the pertinent, you know, when was which, it built? What's the style of architecture? Right, which we have, which is, we have. Is there a historical have. reference name for it, et cetera? And if there's any more information that you get from the reference library, and of course, add that to it. But I don't right. think each <laughs> house needs to take a 10 year research project. Right, exactly. But, and even the form Bs that, that you perhaps put together, the reference librarian, she photocopied them for me and handed them to me. So. Uh, that was very helpful. So then we have that. And if Ben um, emails us the, the next steps that we have to go to, which I've heard, you know, contacting the neighbors and all this, then we can work on that. And that would be, I would say, a working committee, like, how are we going to tackle this? Who's going to do this? And so we could just meet, I'm assuming, because it's not, or, or Ben is this again, an open meeting thing where we say, okay, how are we gonna contact the neighbors and let them know what we're planning? Is that, is that working or is that <laughs> um, goal? I think, I think that level of strategy should be done in a public. You think that should be public? Setting. Okay. Yeah. Again, if it's, if, it's, um, if it's just two of you, like on walking around the neighborhood talking, I think that's <laughs> fine, but um, you know, I think, or even even three, I think that's fine. But I think um, there should always be a report back to the committee it's, uh, to kind of go over those um, kind of strategy and next steps. I think when it, when it becomes four people, it, it becomes a quorum of the committee. And then that, that that's when there's a violation. Yeah. Uh, actually, it, I, well, I had a question because there's only six of us right now. If there's three of us, is that a quorum? Um, uh, no, I think it's still, I think it's still four. Okay. Um, yeah. Can I just backtrack just a little bit and Ben, you would have the answer for this. I'm, I'm assuming that as you researched houses as a group and individually, the, that you found some that did not have a form B and you're, you're creating the form B, which is what we were just talking about. But Ben, could you speak a little bit to the fact that, that this committee can file those form Bs? It, does, it, it doesn't have to be um, a larger process. Is, is that correct? Oh, yeah. Yeah, really anyone can fill <laughs> out um, a form B and submit it to the MACRIS uh, portal. Um, it, you know, it gets a... a a level of review that from the Massachusetts Historical Commission. But yeah, I think if there's homes that are not inventoried or inventories that are lacking um, detail that you can always uh, fill out or amend a form B and submit that to the state. So that might be a good next step if you've created form Bs for some of these properties mm -hmm. to get them identified. And, and you can do that as a as a, a group mm -hmm. from your local historic commission, or or you can do it individually if you've done it. You can you can forward it along, and I'm I'm sure that there must be instructions on the macro site um, telling you how to do that. 
Uh, ben, I, I'm afraid I have to go. I'm, I'm uh, got something that's cropped up, yep. and I no one to, and I'm not part of the the subcommittee. So, and I think this is the last item. So, uh, could I be excused? And uh, yeah, um, I just wanted to uh, before you go, maybe just uh, set the next meeting date. We do have a, a an application okay. that was just submitted. Um, so I was thinking either uh, Monday, April. Or sorry, oh, I don't even have I don't have time to advertise that. Uh, either yeah, we could do Monday, May four. Uh, what is that? May second. Could work. Does that work for folks? Yep. yep. Same uh, three three p.m. Yep. Yes, that Maybe works for me. Three p.m. Did you say? Yeah. So, okay, um, then I guess, Bruce, feel free to go. Thanks for joining us. Thank Pat, you, everybody. Bye-bye. Sorry to have to lump, jump. Pat, I have a question. How do you recommend contacting the neighbors? How did you do that before? I wasn't part of that process, um, but I think there probably are minutes that can be retrieved. Ah, okay. that, would, that would describe how, how the conversation around that and how it was done. Um, okay. I think the difference being is that your local historic district sunset, um, oh my goodness, the, um, <clears throat> the, the streets that are in, included in it, um, there were residents who right. were spearheading this because they wanted the neighborhood protected. Right, this we is were a little different because the the local historic district is spearheading this. It's not initiated by the by the property owners. Actually, I I have a question. Um, I'm still concerned about the number of properties that really aren't historic along there, and what I guess what the ultimate goal is versus the town zoning and I, I understand we want to protect the scale and everything, but some of them really aren't historic. So in their commercial, um, mm -hmm. I just, I just see a lot of the developers who own the properties there as being in opposition to this. Um, I, I mean, I could be wrong, but. Mm. Sorry, have go ahead. You, you, have you reviewed the form Bs for those properties, Judy? I have, but I'm just saying, live, you know, I, 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 I haven't reviewed all of them, but I'm just saying looking, just, just you know, I walk by there all the time, looking mm -hmm. at that whole block, there's so much commercial stuff there that when we contact the, home, the owners of the properties, they're not actually people who live there is what right. i'm saying is the difference correct so i guess that's my concern is is like what do we ultimately want from from all of this you know uh -huh. well taken I'm, I'm hearing i can't think of what the fairy tale would be but like inviting in the wolves kind of thing <laughs> i mean we we want it to be i mean for me i would say i would want it to be the same you know a, 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 a nice the scale would be appropriate and you know, um, and it's not gonna be five story buildings right up to the street edge, but that's not necessarily done by declaring it an extension of the historic district. That's also part of the town planning and zoning issues, I think. Mm -hmm. I just think, I think we need to be mindful that we're not the only tool to prevent huge development from occurring on that side of the street. That's all. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I speak? Yeah, please. Um, I, one, I think one reason that, that we wanted, the subcommittee wanted to get together was to get some consistency on the kind of information that we got and compare our, our form Bs and the additional information. Uh, you know, the, we, we've written some narratives on some of these properties and start thinking about a comprehensive uh, overall write-up, a single write-up 
that that would eventually go to the uh, historic commission, the, the and and then town council, something that would have an argument that these houses do need to be included within the district. Um, I mean that that was our reason in the last few weeks of trying to get together at least the four of us. And isn't that still we we can't do that? You're saying, Ben? Yeah, correct. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm a little unclear. A, a, sort of a subcommittee of the Historic Commission to, to meet addressing. Sorry, I think it. I, I must have missed the first part of what you said, Jim. Can you? Well, I, I was saying one reason to get together was to be able to coalesce the information we've got. Right, right. So it's, you know, relatively even. Yeah. And, and then start with a, you know, another goal for us is to start with a a write-up as to, you know, giving some reasons as to why this should should, should occur. Yeah. And I also want to point out to Judy is that some of those properties that are commercial, um, they actually started as single family houses of some mm -hmm. note 150 almost you know more years ago oh no no i understand that I'm, I'm more talking about like the apartment buildings and you know um yeah they you, yes yeah but they exist right um but we're, we're certainly not trying to stop development down there. Our purview or this is, is simply to have it try and fit into the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, and it's understanding what its mass would be in the neighborhood. And if you want a five-story building there, just let the planning board continue the way they're going. So Ben, there's, there's, I don't see an open meeting where the four of us sit down, read each other these fact sheets and say, how can we coalesce them? Do you really think that needs to be an open meeting? I mean, that's a working thing. Yeah, no, so yeah, no, so I think I'm drawing the distinction that if you're developing the report and and comparing notes and and actually writing a document i think that's fine for you all to meet and okay, do that's that. what we need to do but i but i think if you're you know talking about you know how to you know strategy to contact homeowners and you know next steps and and thinking about kind of the broader picture of this whole project um okay. I, I think that should be done <laughs> okay. public okay. or but that's, that's, yeah, that yeah. gives us a little leeway, I think, uh, to do what Jim, what we need to do, which is read each other these forms and have uh, and coalesce them. Yeah, yeah. And then from then on, the next steps that Pat uh, said you you're going to email us, those would be the strategy. How should we? And those could be open meetings. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Correct. Okay. And I, I would just suggest that as part of going through the form B's that exist to inform yourselves, but going through the form B's that you've created, that you file those sooner than later, because it, it's going to take a little while for them to be acted on to become part of MACRIS. And so if historic preservation is the goal, or at least hearings about it for properties, if there is a form B that led some leads some credibility to the historic um, notability of the property. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, I think that Matt, Matt, the folks at Macris typically, um, at least the one that we did for the historical commission with the sorority building, I submitted a form B for that and they accepted it within, you know, just a, a few days, which was nice. Yeah. So you could lend some guidance to the form B um, submissions, Ben. Yeah, yeah. I'm wondering, it's a little, it's changing the subject a little bit, but 
So as a continuation, I'm wondering if we'll be able to start meeting in person um, soon, because I think that the kind of conversation that it's just different when you're looking at a screen yeah. when you a table together. And these are really important issues and uh, perspectives to be taking on town development, the development around town. Uh, but it would be wonderful if we could be pulling ourselves, if we could be together. I, maybe you could check that out for us, uh, yep. what the guidelines are on that. I would, I would suggest bringing that to us. Okay. Yeah, I can look into that. I basically started right uh, this job right as the pandemic came into mm -hmm. effect and everything went to Zoom anyway. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I've barely had, I think I had a month of in-person meetings and then <laughs> straight straight to Zoom. Well, you've done a great job. I mean, I'm not I'm just keeping. No, I know. Yeah. Very yeah. open. Yeah, this yeah. is not that, but just it would be so wonderful to. to I know. Yeah, I agree. And I, I think we also agreed that Jim could still be part of this subcommittee, even if in June his term expires. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, wonderful. Yeah. We need you, Jim. Sure about that, Ben? Um, I think that's fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I the, the the subcommittee is not really like a recognized, you know, town <laughs> committee per se. So um, if yeah. anything, it might help because you won't count towards the quorum as being a local historic district commission oh, member. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, um, I hadn't heard what Karen just proposed before. So, right. Um, you know, yeah. I'd love to be able to help after June, but um, I wasn't expecting it. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, again, I'm, I don't mean to be a, um, a stickler. I just think in in if uh, if any of this were to be a challenge, you know, it would thwart a lot of the efforts of the study committee if yeah. if someone did take issue with open meeting law issues. So I'm just trying to kind of navigate this as we go, but. Yeah. Um, I think again, there's, you know, kind of like Bruce said, you can kind of treat those more working meetings similar to how we do a site visit. You know, there shouldn't be a lot of like deliberation on opinions or, you know, next strategy type things. But if you're really just developing a report together, I think that's fine. You know, that report will ultimately become public record anyway. So um, I think that that's that's fine. So. So, yeah, is there anything else um, study committee related? Um, I'll share the um, document in terms of, you know, steps for expanding and establishing a historic district. Um, I, I have this, I have this thing, is that? Sorry. Oh, yeah, 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 like the flow chart, that's right. The flow chart. Um, I think after, it's, I don't know if this is the case for us, but it talks about meeting with the Mass Historic Commission. Yeah. Yeah. The, yep. Yeah. The Mass Historic Commission has a, they need to approve of the district. Experience. But this, yeah, but even our, that's like the second, the second step. So oh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Good to meet with them. Even earlier. before the property owner um, opinion survey and stuff. Okay. So, okay. All right. Yeah, maybe it would be good to get some. Um, so you don't need to hear from me all the time. We can bring in. Uh, I think Jennifer Doherty is her name. She's the uh, Western Mass kind of like rep for the Ma uh, Mass Historic Commission. Maybe it'd be good to get some input from the state, and I'm sure she deals with a ton of local historic district projects. So um, oh. that could be a useful resource to hear from. Not in terms of resource, but just to go on record, I would like to suggest that well, given that where the Dickinson property is, the little, is it Taylor Street, that little curved street that comes in before the high school? Uh, yeah. That comes off of Lessie? 
Well, it's diagonally, yeah, it's diagonally across from Lessie. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's a little, it's a little dirt road. They haven't even, they haven't paved it, but they, people on that road didn't want it paved because they didn't want it to be beholden to, they didn't want more traffic coming through and, and they were able to get that through. Anyway, just, uh, so what, whether, it's hard for me to get this out. There's the house on the corner, which is often in states of great disrepair. Oh, right. Not okay. technically part of the district, but the, the back of that, the, the, that street backs right onto the Dickinson property. So it seems to me it's like a gray area. So while we're talking about the scope of our work, whether that's something to talk about how to address in a way that would be equitable to the homeowner and also in some way extend the historic, historic district a tad, as it were, to, to have a little more say and, or, and, and provide a little more guidance on, on what the issues are there. Mm -hmm. Just for the record. Yep. Yeah, I think um, I can look closely at the historic district bylaw. I think there is. Um, I think there there's something about properties within a hundred feet of a historic district. I, I think it's I think it's actually the other way around. I think properties within a hundred feet of the district have the right to comment on projects within the district, but I don't think it goes the other way. Uh -huh. I don't think <laughs> no, no governance. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. no. Let it let it marinate. <laughs> okay. Sort of how to how to deal with it. Absolutely. <laughs> equitable yeah so judy if you're uh, if you have too many houses you're welcome to give me one <laughs> thank you yeah I'll, i will uh i will i will look at them um as soon as as soon as i can and same too yeah thank you um yeah, and I don't have anything for 346. But do you know the name of the, who's the reference librarian at jo the Jones? Uh, yeah, what's her name? Uh, I can't remember offhand, she's so helpful. Is she, is she always at the reference desk there or? I think they're always there. If you, if you find out, Google when the reference uh, is open. Okay. And when it's open, they'll be there and the whole team Oh, okay. Oh, okay. All right. And I thought there was like one, one kind just, of group. Just go there group. with your house that you yeah. have and say, could you help, please help me with this. You were so <laughs> helpful to all the rest. And then they'll, they'll, they love doing it and yeah. they'll put it out. And before you know it, you've got your little packet. Yeah. Great. Yeah, Judy, okay. some of those houses I took to the library for, for um, when um, Jennifer was doing them just to do it for her. So the librarian has looked at some of those. Right, and she, Jennifer gave me the, um, yeah. the package of what she had, so yeah. Right, but, but uh, Karen is right. Any more, not, anything more you need, the librarians are so yeah. eager to help. Yeah, and no, that's great. I just, I didn't know if there was like one specific reference librarian to look for. I can't remember who that yeah, librarian uh, is. Her name is Cindy, Cindy, Cindy Harbison. That's right. She's that's the, right. She, works, she works in special collections. Oh, okay. Okay, there that's great. Somebody besides Cindy who got, um, who helped me. So I think. Me too. Her, okay, yeah. I'll, 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 I'll find him. Thank you. Great. I thought it was really fun because each time I walk by those houses now, I have this knowledge about them. So it was fun to hear about the people that live there and. And, and Jim, because of the pressure of meeting today, I got a little notebook and a little, and I put ring binders kind of because I was so impressed with how organized you were. Uh, yeah. And it made such a difference. Now I have the four houses. And so I think, um, yeah, it's fun. It's not that much work when you have all the help that we have. Here's mine. In a I big, also thank Google you so stuff. Much. Big notebook. Oh, it doesn't seem to show up on the screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So good. I also found out interesting things just putting the various names in Google and seeing what came up. Right. This is full. Oh, wow. Um, 
Yeah, and, and I found out this uh, great story about Triangle Street, how there was a battle. I don't know if you know about this, Ben. <laughs> There was a battle between the two taverns, the Boggs ta Tavern and, the <laughs> and then the Boltwood, and they were vying for uh, customers. And so the people in the east, they started building a road to make access from the west easier to their uh, tavern so that they would get more uh, customers. And then the people from the Boltwood, uh, they didn't like that. So. The, the, the East people built the road themselves in the morning, and then in the evening, the West people came and tore it all down again. Wow. It got to be such a battle <laughs> that people would come from all around and watch them sort of, they never, they never physically fought each other, but they'd rail, they'd build the bridge, <laughs> and then the other ones would tear it down again. And <laughs> at the end, that's how Triangle Street got built. Wow. wow. Yes. Yeah, no, so really I cool just, story. That's why. Yeah. And you all have these books. These of you sit in my dining room. You know this yeah. Oh, that's nice. Oh, Peggy. Oh. Have you wow. read yeah. them? I don't remember where I've gotten these, though. And then there's Hastings has them. Hastings. You can buy yeah. them at Hastings. Yeah, they're, they're wonderful. They're, they're little resources, and there's stuff yeah. on the house in here, which I just. Think is so great, but I, I I have many versions of, or many copies of that Dickinson District Guide. I'm e eager to get rid of them if, if folks oh, want them. Oh, the metro <laughs> commissioners yeah. have them. Send them yeah. out. Right. Yeah, right. they are fun. Huh. So, um, will you be reading in person coming up. I mean, how are you thinking about that? That would be so exciting. So um, May 2nd is would not be good for me to meet in person, I think, because I'm just arriving back from Spain. Uh -huh. And I also don't know if it's good for me because I'm just right, arriving back from England on the 2nd. Yeah. Uh, so there you go. I could so Zoom probably with After the, I told you I could do it, I began to worry. I, I yep, think yeah, the, 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 the May meeting will be over Zoom. Um, it, we can't meet in, to, in, in person until July. Yeah, good. Oh, and, and, that, yeah. That's mandated by the state. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Ben, I don't even know if I can do it over Zoom. I will have to check with my schedule and get, I'll get back to you. In May, okay. In May, because May 2nd is my flight home. Oh, okay. So yeah. I can't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. I think it would be good to do it a week later. I honestly do, because I don't think, Rita, you're going to be here in time. I don't think so. Um, it's just be, uh, I was going to say something, but I thought, whoa. No, you're absolutely right, Karen. I just was optimistic. And then I, because I thought, oh, well, I get back May 2nd, but I'm on the plane on May 2nd. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, because Bruce isn't here, uh, does May 9th work for everyone? And I can email Bruce just to confirm. That would work for me. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. That would work for me, May 9th. Yeah, that would be better. Is okay. the application, do they need? Are they, um, do they need it done really quickly? Um, I'm, I'm sure they'd appreciate having it done quickly. It's, it's a commercial property, so okay. maybe it's, it's a little bit. Maybe less they're urgent. more flexibility. The baby yeah. being born was, was, um, yeah, dramatic. I'm glad we got in before. I mean, uh, Ben, the other possibilities we could change it so that it, we don't wait a whole week and just for do it on a, it's not Monday, but. Because I could do it any other day that week. Okay. It's just that we're coming home on the first and the second. I could do the third, but not the fourth. Uh, the third, okay. The day, yeah, I, I can't do the fourth, but any other time that week I could. Okay. Um, yeah, we could do the third. Um, I'll, I'll check with Bruce. Just, oh, yeah, I'll check with Bruce just to make sure. But I think I'm also happy just to kick it a, a week later to May 9th. So. Okay. Ben, so. I love your backdrop. <laughs> oh, thank you. Yeah, that, that's that's from uh, Special Collections at Jones. That was Library. before the, yeah, yeah. I, now the bank is there. Right. Uh, no, actually, this is where a sub subway is. It's that corner. Oh, subway. Corner. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. 
All right. Thank you, Thank you all. Yeah. Taking our leave. Yeah. Okay. Have a good time. Um, cool. All righty. Yeah, I think we can adjourn. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you to Thanks. Pat for all the information. <laughs> Pat, it was Pat. really helpful that you came. Thank you so much. Yeah, well, really thank was. you for inviting me. And and I'm more than willing to, you know, support you in, in your efforts. So thank you. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Adios. <laughs> Adios. All right. Bye-bye. Take care, everyone. Bye.